himself first, Holmes was born. Then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. Stop, Holmes. Beware your host, Jonathan Holmes. Thank you, Sinistar, for introducing me on my own show. I'm Jonathan Holmes. This is my show, Sup Holmes. It's a live stream talk show with video game people, and I've got one of the most intense video game people that I've ever not met, but I've been reading her work for a long time. It's Anna Anthropy is on the show this week. Say hi to everyone, Anna. Hi. Oh, it's so great. You're really on the show. I can't believe uh, I got you on the show. I'm it was really a video game me. person. I come from video games. <laughs> you do. Your, uh, your games and you are so tightly uh, woven together. You, mm -hmm. you're, in, in my mind, that you almost are like part video game. And in the background <laughs> is Daphne, your, your uh, comrade in arms, almost uh -huh. literally. How is she doing back there? She's <laughs> doing okay. I'm eating breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both for joining me on the show. So uh, for people that don't know, Anna, you've been working uh, uh, on video games for a long time. You've written about video games. You've mm -hmm. made video games. You've done speeches about video games. When did it all start for you? When did you first start um, really getting into video games? In oh, God, what a question. Um... I don't know how deep do you want to dig. Like my, I played video games with my mother when I was like five years old. Like, how old were? Uh, how long ago was that? When were you five? Or do you not want to? I'm twenty nine. You're kidding me. You're twenty. Why? Wait, how old do you think I am? Seven well, it's, it's not, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're maybe I'm I'm thirty five. So people that are oh, much smarter than us. I know I'm old. It's sad. I'm bald too. When people are much smarter than me, I always think they're at least my age, and you're like, you know, a quarter. Uh, you're, you're you're younger than me, and that makes me feel like a stupid. But anyway, uh, so you were. Like, uh, so based on like how much smarter I am than you, how old should I be? Seventy thousand. Well, that's the thing. You don't look old. <laughs> yeah, seventy thousand. Let's run over that. Uh, so you were five in what, like eighty? Five? Yeah. No, I wasn't oh, you? five and 82. I wasn't oh, born. Oh, oh, I thought you said you, I, thought you said <laughs> I was three, I guess, 98, 88. Oh, okay, man. I'm not sure now we have, like, the, the chronology established. Yes, now we know. So we're picturing you, five years old, playing what video games with your mom? Actually, I play a lot of Bubble Bobble with my mother. I was really into that. We, Dude, have I you seen know, this thing? I know this. Awesome. I should send this to you. Uh, like, well, you should. And how do you think Bubble Bobble influenced? I uh, <laughs> now that I said it, I have to do it. I will send it to you. I promise. Uh, Bubble Bobble was a big influence on me. How did it influence you growing up? I know, like I really liked. I mean, we played it cooperatively because that's how you play Bubble Bobble. Mm -hmm. um, and I was always sort of um, shush. I really like. I really like games that you can play with people you care about, and there's not a lot of there's not a lot of that like anymore. Not a lot mm -hmm. of games are made with like that sort of social dynamic in mind, and like I don't know, that's always the sort of thing that I kind of aspire to in my games to make games that you can like that can help you relate to someone that you love a little bit mm -hmm. better or someone mm -hmm. that you hate. Um, either way. Yeah, as a, as a tool to get to know each other. And that's something I'm hearing a lot with the indie uh, community these days. There's a lot of focus on local co-op. Um, Is there? Yeah, that's what I've heard. Johan Sebastian Joust. People won't stop talking to me about that. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard just about everybody who's been on the show. Like there's a focus on it. I think there's so little of it that everybody like jizzes when yeah. it actually happens. Yeah. And besides, that sword fight game is better than Johann Sebastian. Oh my god, anyway. sword fight game is so good. <laughs> oh, no, you know what you're talking about? You Nidhogg, I think it is. Is that how you pronounce it? Huh? Nidhogg? No, oh. no, no, no. no. Sword fighting game so, a so, um, <laughs> this game is you have a you have a leather harness and you use it to strap a an Atari joystick to your crotch, and Whoa. then so you have two people who are wearing these Atari joystick strap-ons, and the goal is to press the other player's button with the tip of your joystick. And, and, uh, and optionally, yeah. the game is also played with your arms handcuffed behind your back. 
So how do you, uh, how does the joystick know, how does the Atari joystick know when the it's button... It's just like whether the button is depressed. Ah, uh, okay. Like, so is it I mean, plugged I into a computer? You, like, if you have like a really pointy like inner thigh, you could press someone's button with that. But like the joystick <laughs> seems like the, the most um, like useful tool. Yeah. It's the I most... Uh, like this game came out and like, like 20 people messaged me and asked if I created it. And I was really disappointed that I had it. Yeah, she got really <laughs> Does it have a name? I want to go look it up now. I should get them on the show next. You should. Um, you should get them sword fighting on the show. <laughs> that would be great. You guys can do sword, sword fighting on this episode of the show. <laughs> I wish I had. So, uh, Bubble Bobble is from a time when video game culture, I think, was, was very different than mm -hmm. it is now. Um... I felt very at home in video game culture then, also because I was younger. I was like eight when that came out. But these days, I don't always feel as at home in, in video game culture, and that's something you've voiced a lot as well. Do you, is that, uh, or am I reading into things too much? Is that something you've noticed change over the years? We, yeah, uh, well, it's, um, it's, it's a lot of things. I mean, video game culture has changed in a lot of ways, but the people who make video games hasn't changed a lot, and that's mm -hmm. also part of the problem. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that that video game culture, like who's allowed to make video games and who in turn becomes the audience for video games, who in turn grows up to make the next video games, are mm -hmm. by and large just like head dudes, like mostly white, straight, cisgender dudes who don't really... Um, have to care about oppression or stuff like that. And so the games that end up getting produced are games that are, um, that represent like a really narrow sort of slice of the human experience. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as you know, like, as a queer transgendered woman, I have a hard time relating that to myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm, so I'm really interested in, having more different voices and having more, you know, marginalized people involved in the process of making games. So we have something that, like, looks a little bit more like, you know, the full range of the human experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, uh, man, there's so many places I want to go with that. Have you felt that way for a long time, or was there kind of a change in, in uh, the games that were out and also... Uh, video game culture as a result, where it started to feel more alienating for, for people who aren't just uh, cisgendered uh, dudes. I mean, yeah, I, I, I felt that way for a long time. There was a point in my life when I just gave up playing video games for a really long time because they had absolutely nothing to say to me. And when was that? I really want to know. That was... Um, in college? In college, yeah. Second. Just was that like PlayStation 2 for you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure it's gonna come up. Um, <laughs> anyway, wait, what was your what was your question? I was asking when it was when it started to change. Because for is, me, um, yeah. yeah, it was about like I don't know, 2005 ish. It was when I was in college, and um, I remember like games like like I, I remember Metal Gear Solid 2 being like one of the last games I I played, and like throwing my hands and being like, this is dumb. This is really <laughs> stupid. I don't care about this. And then I stopped caring about video games for a really long time until I found out that a program called Game Maker existed. Mm -hmm. And then I found all these games that people had made with Game Maker and like all these little freeware games that people were making on the internet. And then I realized that games didn't have to be stupid. <laughs> and, and do you think that the, the Kojima slime. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I personally think that uh, I really want to hear why you didn't like Metal Gear Solid 2 so we'll get to that in a second but, um, computer slime. <laughs> because uh, why? he's he computer like, slime? oh god he, everything that Hideo Kojima makes is like covered in this like coating of slime that's just awful and repellent like <laughs> I tried to like a couple of months ago I tried replaying Snatcher and I, you know, the game has a couple of like it has a couple of neat moments. There's a part where they tell you to turn up the volume, and then there's a really loud explosion, and then you're like, "Oh, that's scary." Um, but like <laughs> everything in the game is so gross, and from so like from the perspective of like 
this Japanese dude who just wants to like lech on little girls and like is really obsessed with like his own like fantasies of being a filmmaker and like making references that like maybe you don't get because that's because how... you haven't played enough of his hideous Kingdom uh-huh. Hearts games. Like it's just it's everything I don't like about video game culture. They reward self referential. It's, it's really rewarding. Heterosexist. Being, like in uh, uh like it's super incestuous and it rewards mm. you for like being all in jokey and like, oh, we know this secret gamer language because we are covered in hideous Kojima slime. It's mm. fucking gross. Mm. Was there ever a time you considered yourself one of those uh, gamer, I don't know, I think you used the time I consider myself covered in slime? <laughs> <laughs> well, a part of the culture because I, when I'm a part of a culture, you know, when I, when, I don't know, just for example, Adventure Time. When people do Adventure Time inside jokes with me, I'm like, oh, haha, that's funny, Marceline, yeah. Adventure uh, Time is not covered in slime. <laughs> so it's when it's covered in slime there's that a, it's gross, when you're kind of incestuous like that. There's a difference between a call and response to make a connection, immediate connection between people because, like, that's funny, and between creating a hierarchy of, like, knowledge because I know more inside jokes mm-hmm. than you. Video game culture is like a, co- a culture of exclusion in a big way. And, like, I know there's a lot of gatekeeping and policing that happens. Mm. Like, you know, when someone says something like, the cake is a lie, they're not doing anything, like, clever. They're just trying to establish, like, who's, yeah, who's inside the circle and who's outside. Mm. And that doesn't really... Um, make for a very inclusive video games culture. Absolutely. Daphne, if you're going to say smart things, can you be in the shot? You're like, all I saw was your hand, like, holding you're a cereal. Behind me right there now. There you are. Yeah, show sure. everyone that big, beautiful smile. Come on. I was petting the cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably going to happen a lot. <laughs> uh, so, uh, from my perspective, video game culture is really inclusive and really... Um, uh, xenophobic and, and hateful to anyone who tries to get into it because so many people in video game culture consider themselves outsiders and they try to make their own little world where they would feel included but then kind of reverse that. I was that. stuck into a locker in school. I'm oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, what I take from that is they don't know real oppression, a lot of the people who say, I've been made fun of for liking Dungeons and Dragons. Oh mm. my god, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but please speak to that. Speak to that idea. Huh? I mean, a trans woman was killed in like at an intersection that I pass like every day of the week in my town. And like, I'm really sorry you got made fun of for playing Dungeons and Dragons. Like, yeah, like, I, mean, I got made fun of for being a fat chick, but it made me learn how to skateboard and, like, kick people's asses so they stopped making fun of me. Like, oh, instead of, like, doing something productive, you whine about it on the internet and go on, like, an MRA forum and talk about how, like, <laughs> women are oppressing you. Instead of, like, bettering yourself and overcoming things yeah. and, like, speaking out, you just, There's... like, speak to each other in these small circle jerks of, like incestuous, like, man jerking, mm-hmm. and it's disgusting. There's, like, this thing where people, like, you know, nerds feel like they know what oppression is, and so it enables them to silence and speak over anyone else who talks about oppression, who talks about, like, the way that your sexism is making me unsafe. Like, yeah. Yeah? And, and the thing is, like, it's not that nerds don't completely not know what oppression uh, is. It's because just, bullying is a real thing, and it happens, yeah. and it happens to everyone, and but, like, the thing it's is, valid. I have to check my privilege as a white, like, cis woman all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I have way more privilege than Anna does, and, like, I'm not fucking going on forums bitching about how Mam is oppressing me with her penis privilege or something. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Like, Everybody has privilege, and all you have to do is recognize yeah. it, and then like fucking get over it and be a decent person. Like, yeah, it's not hard I at mean, all to make friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the problem is just when people deny their privilege, when they refuse to acknowledge. Yeah, like instead of just being like I'm privileged, being like, well, I'm not privileged because of this and this and this, and oh god, my life is so. Yeah, hard. and if you're doing that, then what you're actually doing is silencing someone who is attempting to have a conversation with you about the ways in which you're making her feel unsafe. People just take it too personal. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's gross, and it just makes people continue to be unsafe. 
Like, yes. Not his big, huge, white, burly, hairy psychologist friend <laughs> who is a cis man, but he's very, very aware. And he's aware of the fact that his huge, white, burly, hairy cis man presence can make feel pe people feel uncomfortable, like even in his clinic. And he won't volunteer to help like a person of color, tiny woman who's crying because he probably scares the shit out of her. And he doesn't take that personally mm -hmm. because they've never fucking met. So how mm -hmm. can he? And it's just like, how is that hard for everyone else to do? Like, like yeah, you had a conflict well, recently where at this clinic, they're, um, they have, you know, a group where, where they counsel people who have been in abusive relationships and, mm -hmm. you know, most of the people um, who are in that group have been abused by um, by cis dudes, and so he, you know, he's capable of recognizing that maybe him as a cis dude leading that group will make people feel less safe, less secure, less like willing to talk about the things that they've gone through than if it was led by someone else. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not a it's not a hard thing to do, but it is a hard thing to do to it's, acknowledge it's, when that, you like... Take it personally, it's a hard thing to do, but when you just yeah. understand that people might not trust you because of, like, mm -hmm. your privilege, then, then like, just accept it. Yeah. Talk about video games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try to bring it back. People get to, angry to at me. tie this back into video games, video games have a problem acknowledging their privilege. He was going to say something. I oh, that's okay. Anna's something. supposed to talk. All the time. <laughs> well, do you... People get angry at me whenever I criticize anything that anyone who plays video games might do. They get really, really angry at me because they want me to, like, kiss their butt a lot, I think. I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is. Uh, say that again? Video games? Because you're a journalist? I guess so. I don't know. If I'll say... Gee, a lot of people bought blank video game just because it had a lot of hype. Then a lot of people will get really, really angry at me and saying disrespectful and that I don't appreciate my, my precious, audience. Baby. Like, my precious brand loyalty. Do you, just, do you just like picture these people like with those baby stroller with that video game in their stroller, like nursing it from their tit? No, like, actually, no, no, don't listen to me. I think I think you have I think you have the image wrong for the. <laughs> it's the game that's pushing the stroller, and, <laughs> and the nerds are in the stroller. Sucking their pacifiers. <laughs> so let's let's let's. De what do you? How do you define nerd? What what do you mean when you say nerd? Because that can mean anything I, from someone who's really passionate to someone. I use it as a pejorative. I usually when I'm talking about nerds, I'm talking about people who. The people who are gonna get mad at you for calling them a nerd. Yeah, <laughs> people who don't have a lot of life experience and are uncomfortable with being called out for anything, mm -hmm. being forced to. Oh, hello. Like, um, for example, this is like, you can tell a lot of times when someone has just never, ever been called on any of their shit, and they're like super, <laughs> super, super entitled. Like, okay, so, so, like <laughs> so, like at, at GDC this past year, I was hanging out with, um, with Robert Yang, and Porpentine. my friends Sparky and Porpentine and like, you know, a, a bunch of queer game developers sitting around in a circle. And we were talking about the word Yannick as like... How it's the opposite of phallic. How it's the opposite of the word phallic. Mm -hmm. um, and there was some nerd who was just like standing there like quietly and he was like, oh, like Yanni, because he's a vag. <laughs> and all of us just like <laughs> turned our heads and we were just like... <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, what? I was like, so what? Like, because badges are like rehensible, gross, disgusting things. Is that what you're saying? No, like, I'm not saying. I'm not saying no. And like, anything's wrong with badges, other than that they're disgusting and like yeah, they're terrible like, you know, and gross. Yeah, they're gross, mm -hmm. horrible, boring, like a badge, right? Uh -huh. That's cool, guy. And where I was just like, go away. And, and it was, was like, so. No. He was like <laughs> trying to stand. Like it was yeah, so was, like, obvious ground, that like, he had never, him. never been called. <laughs> out for anything before. He'd never been in a situation where someone had corrected him or said, like, something you said is not okay to say. Like, so he just, like, he was, like, kept trying to impose himself 
on like the conversation until we like made him feel so shitty that he just like slunk away and went to a cave like, somewhere. No, I'm not gonna walk away. I'm gonna stay here, like hovering over your group of people that obviously don't want me because uh-huh. you don't want me. And we're like, go away. Like just uh-huh. leave. Like it's this is a huge open space. Your friends are over there. Like you just like talked into our conversation to begin with. Mm-hmm. Like. You impose, you impose into our conversation to tell us that badgers are dirty. Yeah, and then we said, no, you're not welcome in this public conversation, like, kindly, like, wouldn't feel like, no, we said, go away. And, and so we just, like, slowly backs away. Mm-hmm. Huh. And, and like, he just didn't read you properly? Yeah. Video game culture, like, manufactures that sort of person. Yeah, what do you expect to be like... called out for saying badge like that at GDC? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's a safe space for badge shaming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> huh. huh. So... I get the sense that you're really hoping to turn that around. Um, and you wrote a book about it, people should know, in case they don't. That's uh-huh. what I took your book to, to largely read oh, about. <laughs> can you show your book? What a cool this cover it's got. Um, I don't know if you closer, can see the... A little closer? Yeah. The camera's in the middle. Oh, there you go. Nice. Okay. My book is called Rise of the Video Game Zinsters. And, I'm on the cover. And, and she's on the cover. I'm on the cover, too. And it's basically... Um, it's basically about why everyone should make games and how everyone can make games and why it's important that more people make games, which is basically what we've been talking about. Um, yeah. I don't think games culture will change until the people who are allowed to make video games change. And the reality is that like tools are out there right now for you know people who aren't professional game developers, for like anyone to to make games game makers out twine stencil um, the thing is that the, like a lot of marginalized people a lot of people who are alienated from video games because the culture is so toxic and sexist and misogynist and terrible um, would never know that those tools exist would never you know be be open to the idea that maybe video games are something that they should care about something that doesn't have to be as gross and you know about Guys fucking each other with chainsaws, like so. I wrote games that. Gears of War. Gears oh of yeah. War Gears of War three. Gears of War Arena. Like. I never thought of that. I think of that as a game about something. It might not be about what. I think of that game as a about. game about violence porn. Like, it, like every screen of that game I've seen has just been like. Like someone like frauding someone else with a chainsaw while while they go like. Ugh. <laughs> and, uh, and it's very popular. It's a very popular game. More popular than other games that are, are similar. They don't have perhaps, the chainsaw. Oh, you know what else is popular? Things that are shit. Yeah. Like Disney Shades of Grey and Forrest Gump. Actually, wow. hey, actually, popular. That's a, really, that's actually, really it's interesting. It's of, interesting like, that you say things. that because looking at like Gears, Gears of War, it's pretty obvious that the game is Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> No, it's more like Fifty Shades of Brown. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a uh, pretty please everybody a little bit. Not. I fair, doesn't please fair, me very much. To be fair, I played co-op with Sparky in Gears of War, and I yeah. really like the level design. I just can't get over the grunty like uh-huh. like crunchy grunty of it. giant giant steroid men like, in like an all gray brown world. If you put a different skin on it, like. Colors change the characters. Give it colors. Yeah, like yeah. they made it Rainbow Daffy Land. Uh-huh. Like, because it's really fun. It's just like, God, I can't get over this. See, the thing is nonsense. that the game might be really fun, but like, it's so, it's designed in such a way that it's so, it's presented in such a way, rather, that yeah. it's so alienating yeah, it's to anyone who's not like some frat bro. The sense of, like, the sense of space in it is pretty good. At mm-hmm. least in the first one. I've only played the first one. And I played it cool. Uh-huh. Oh, well, they're all pretty much the same. But, like, yeah. I, I had to, like, you know, grind my teeth and, like, have a puke bucket nearby just so I could get through, like, uh, cutscenes and, like, oh, my cock is so fucking big, I'm gonna cut you with it. Like, uh, I just I don't know. Now your cock is your chainsaw. Um, <laughs> Could you take it as unintentional self-parody, though? That's how I got into... Well, I it's feel just, like I feel like all of the video game industry is, like, sort of unintentionally self-parodying itself at this point. Yeah. Like... The the thing is that like like shit like that is still really really alienating to anyone who's like not already immersed in that. Right, mm-hmm. like there is that girl. Like it's really hard to introduce they people are. who like have political beliefs that are like you know actually who actually think about, care about shit. Who actually think about shit that matters. Like at 
your book thing talk about that girl who was trying to tell people that video games can do good. You mean Naomi? That was Naomi. Was that Naomi? That yeah, was I, Naomi. I, I, that was before she introduced herself. Anyway, um, so I was doing, so when my book came out, I, you know, I went on a little book tour. I spoke in New York first, because that's where I'm from. Um, the very first um, reading I did was at Blue Stockings Bookstore in New York, which is like a really wonderful anarchist bookstore that's been around forever. And it was packed full of beautiful people. And, you know, when during the question and answer session, um, someone who I hadn't met before, but who turned out to be, um, to be Naomi, what's her last name? What? Huh? No. No. no not the famous one, right? I was all excited. She's famous. Okay, she's famous. She's famous to me. She's famous, like if you like, if you're actually involved in like the U games in New York. She worked for Game Lab, and she's worked for everyone, really. Huh. Anyway, um, anyway, she, she. This was before she introduced What's herself to me. What's your Twitter name? Say your Twitter name. Maida Cynthia. Yeah, Maida Cynthia. Uh huh. Okay. She. Um, anyway, so she raised her hand. She was like, "I have been trying so hard to convince all of like all of the queer people and the radical people that I care about that." Games are something, like, worth paying attention to, worth giving a shit about. And it's so hard because that culture is so toxic and so alienating mm -hmm. that they can't imagine that, you know, this form could ever produce anything that would be meaningful to their lives. Mm -hmm. And that's basically why I wrote the book, to sort of let those people know that... Um, that video games can do shit that's, uh, that's like not Gears of War, that's not God of War, that's not other games about war. Right. Like, that video games so actually can be relevant to me, to, to people's lives, and especially to like the lives of marginalized people. And they have a convention. Some people are doing a convention, I should say. You're talking about GamerCon? Yeah. I heard that they asked you to speak, and you declined. I probably personally was sad about that because you, I was okay. hoping this is not what you heard is not the actual story that happened. Okay, um, sorry. They never they never actually uh, approached me to speak to speak. Um, what Robert uh, so Robert Yang on his blog posted about how the um, the, title the choice of title is yeah. problematic and alienating because obviously it you know it's GamerCon with the G A Y. Um, which is a word that usually refers exclusively to gay men, and you know, as also when you say it aloud, how does that sound queer at all? Yeah, it just sounds like GamerCon. <laughs> um, but yeah, like like, and it's also the other thing that's problematic about the conference is that it's for eighteen, like people who are eighteen or older only, and like so, GamerCon eighteen plus, you know, eighteen or older only says exactly. to me. So Gay boy it, club. it says to me, hook up, hook up club. And, like, you know, as a trans woman, I wouldn't feel comfortable, like, going to, like, that conference and hanging out in that space. All 18 like, plus things listed as gay in San Francisco are the gay yeah, dominated it's like, club. It's like fucking mm. Folsom. Yeah, it's Folsom the Folsom here. of video games. Um, <laughs> huh, and, interesting. Yeah, and so, like, and so what Robert Yang posted in his blog was, you know, there are some people who are really queer and like talk about video games and live like like less than a mile from you who are not going to be attending your conference because your name is so problematic and you link to my blog um oh, okay. they never That's actually right. like you never approached me about speaking there um i did meet someone who was involved in organizing GamerCon um something like 5 months ago um and I sort of explained to him why I felt like it was problematic, and he was like, and, you know, he was like, well, we well we want to be like more inclusive to like other like other people like like trans people, and I was like, do you do you have any trans people on your committee? No. And he was like, no, but we're working on it. Did he ask you? Were right there? Did he? Even no, ask? he didn't ask me. Um, no, but we're working on it. Mm -hmm. While like the like the the game's most foremost trans historian standing right in front of him. <laughs> Here I am, basically saying hello. I can do this, and he's uh -huh. like, "Well, we're working on it." Huh. Maybe he was afraid to ask you. Mm. 
I don't I mean, know. I it's it. like I don't think he prioritized it very highly. Um, mm. And when you said working on it, that means I'm blowing you off. Yeah, okay. basically. Would you have wanted to speak at it or help run it if they had asked? I would have been interested in talking to them about ways that they could change their identity to be less gross yeah, and alienating so to me. Yeah, she wasn't even being like super aggressive, like, I'm shutting your shit down. I'm just saying, hey, like, mm -hmm. maybe you should do this and this and this. Basically offering yourself on, like, a fucking silver platter like, <laughs> with a side of gold That's nuggets. your job. But, like, no, the uh -huh. thing is, she was right there saying, I can fucking help you. I know everyone. And, mm -hmm. like, Hi, I'm the best PR ever, and and like he was just like, well, we're working on it. Uh, yeah, they basically uh, blew me off. <laughs> if they were, if what I wish they had done is asked you to speak and talk about why the name is problematic, if they were going to stick with the name, because that's the exact, that's the best yeah. venue for it. Um, I, I I think your your I points mean, and Robert Yang's points were yeah, were great, I, and I hope they get I shown. Probably would have. I probably would have at least showed up to tell them why they were all wrong. Um, yeah, which would be which is I, more I than I which is more than I was willing to do for Penny Arcade. They asked me to speak at the Penny Arcade Expo. Oh, the one I'm where there. they were like, "Oh, trans character heroes and like cloud and dragon." Yes, kind of like so this guy, huh? so this guy um, <laughs> from Penny Arcade, um, you know, from Pen the Penny Arcade Expo from PAX, mm -hmm. approached me about being on a panel he was organizing about trans game developers and characters and whatever at um, at PAX. And I like I like so I clicked on the guy's homepage and like I looked at like you know the articles he's written and like he has he had an article about like the top ten trans characters in video games and like the top trans characters in video games were Cloud Strife in a dress, um, the oh. guy from Dead Rising Birdo. in a dress, Birdo. Um, that, Is Birdo trans? Oh, Is Birdo yeah. even a person? Like, intersex and not actually trans. Intersex. Uh huh. So I was like, and I was, yeah. and you also said like, and we're also gonna have this um this cross dressing like cosplay parade that marches around the <laughs> the entire panel, and I was like, okay, um, I'm trying I to avoid. I was I was like, okay, I don't think you actually know what the word trans means, <laughs> and I'm not comfortable appearing on a panel with you. You did educate like, that person though, because you. I tried. You were really, you were really, what's the word, amicable? Nice. Cool. nice. I don't know if I was nice, but you I did explain mean. to him why he was wrong. Like you weren't, you weren't the type of mean that you are to like marketing bullshit. People, <laughs> but like you were like you explained to him why he was wrong without like yelling at him and being like you were a complete fucking bigot because he was just completely in the dark. Like uh -huh. who the hell gave him this job? Why? Did, like it was just obvious that they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. So Anatoly like just schooled him in in the nicest way possible. Mm -hmm. Aw, that's good. It doesn't sound like he was trying to do any harm. Well, it sounds like he just didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, he didn't at all. Yeah, he didn't. But the thing is, like, I offered to, to like, do a video. Like, because I didn't want to actually go to PAX because PAX is gross. Um, and I just don't want to say Can you there. touch on that afterwards? But, yes. but he said, like, he said, oh, you can make, like, a video or something, and then we'll show it. And I was like... Like this, these are all the reasons I'm not going to be speaking at your panel. But I'll make a video and you can show it. And he never took me up on the offer. He just never talked to me again. Max is gross because of the stories of all the female like and like it's... and 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 people we know like going just felt unsafe and had yeah. calls and it was just disgusting. And we it's know a few people who are trying like, to make it better. Like we have yeah. a few friends that are speaking at panels and stuff. Maddie is Maddie has graciously volunteered to go to their next trans panel, which ought to be as awful as the previous one, except for the fact that Maddie's on it. Yeah, but she's Maddie gonna, Bryce, who is amazing. Maddie Bryce is wonderful. Um, <laughs> but she, I, I made her promise me that she's going to kick off the, um, she's going to kick the moderator off the panel and moderate herself. Yeah, because she, she might get banned for life for that. Oh, don't say that on me. Oh, oh yeah. Trump too. <laughs> God, this is lying. Oh, no, shit. Like your um, mouth. So whatever I just said, I didn't actually say. No, um, it's all. First yeah. of all, um, yeah, it's I'm just okay. yeah, it's probably probably fine. Well, then maybe now we can like now we can make it official. No, um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, I was basically I didn't trust that guy. I didn't run a panel, and I don't really trust like cis dudes in like video games culture to moderate and present panels about trans people. Um, yeah. 
And I, you know, the panels that they ended up having at Penny Arcade, they put it online, and it was pretty problematic for really a lot of reasons. There was no. There was all trans there was, women, right? It was it was all well it was all trans women and like some people who were like it was trans women and cis guys and like so there's no, there was no there's no talk about like yeah trans masculinity about gender gender for anyone. There was an, like an intersex character that they talked about as like one of the best um, trans characters in video games. And you know, um, my friend Naomi again, she watched she like was brave enough to actually watch the whole thing, and yeah, she, she we, said, she it. It "Uh huh, it was pretty good." And she said, "Like there was, there's a part where they were talking about trans characters in video games, um, like you know, like listing them off, and the only one that had like anything to do with a real trans person was my game Dysphoria. All the others were these bishy androgynous, like weird, um, like." cross-dresser stereotypes of transgendered mm -hmm. women, which, you know, is what, you know, our, our mainstream culture thinks trans women looks like. Um, so was it educational like, at all? Like, hey, this isn't what It wasn't, no. Like. like, they had, like, one game there that was actually, like, represent representative of a trans experience. Um, although Your supposedly, <laughs> I mean... Uh, supposedly, a couple of like trans women who were actually in this industry were on the panel. They were Red Burger Becky was there, um, and someone else whose name I can't remember. Someone who like someone who's in the industry who recently like came out, but I can't remember her name or what she's done or anything. But so anyway, it sounds like they made some effort. This just how it sounds. It sounds so. What, what basically what they need to do is just let trans women talk. Yes. Mm -hmm. That seems pretty logical to uh -huh. me. You know, if they were doing I a agree. panel about bald, freckled guys, and then they had you talk at it, <laughs> and didn't have me talk, I'd be like, this doesn't really add up. Yeah. Let me huh. listen to the bald, freckled guys in video games. Isn't he talking about himself? <laughs> huh? Isn't he talking about himself? I am. I'm bald and freckled, aren't I? Good job getting the joke. I can't. I can, I'm sorry, I can't see your freckles. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not your fault. It's okay. No, I can't. No, there's like, it's like. No, you have to come closer. Come closer. 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 I can see them from okay, here. yeah, I can see them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but if Penny Arcade did ask you, to go maybe they will now. Penny Arcade. I get the sense that they're making a real effort to please everybody, but don't. Know how I and are using their they, identity in the process. I, yeah. Well, when you you publicly tweet like that, you support a game about tentacle rape and that yeah. you that you support it and that it gets people mad. That's not really trying to please uh -huh. everyone. That's well, they're only trying to appeal to a certain. Well, I feel like there's a thing where like maybe some of the people who are involved in the expo aren't terrible right, right, and right. trying to make it less right. terrible. It, but unfortunately, the guys who own it are douchebags. Yeah, and like the whole terrible. my wife took a feminist studies class, so I'm completely immune to all yeah. criticism of my, like, misogyny. Well, that's the same thing as, like, as, as a guy saying, like, I was bullied for playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Mm. Like, no, you, that doesn't get you, like, an like, out from, it, like, yeah, this criticism is a, about this your privilege. This is a war you can't use your wife as a human shield. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's the kind of nerd victim card that they pull. Uh-huh. Uh, Which is, you know, out. it's just a silencing tactic. I mean, that would, told, that would be mm. like me being like, oh, I'm dating a trans woman, so therefore I can't, I can't be, be transphobic. Yeah. yeah, like, and that's totally something I don't fucking say because it's not fucking mm -hmm. true. Yeah, you're actually, like, really respectful about being called out for anything. Yeah. About your privilege. Because I'm not a fucking idiot dumbass. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I, well, think I think I try to be probably because what you, you, say? What you have... saying? Stop talking to me. Well, no, oh, no, it's okay. You guys no, we're having a conversation. This is this is important. As long as I'm speaking, then the thing is working. Um, <laughs> no, I'm saying like the reason that like the reason that you're really good about your privilege and about being called out is because you've been with me for a long time. No, it's because and... I'm awesome. It's not because of you. No, no, it is because of me. Because... No. <laughs> no, because well, like... the only reason you're famous is because of me. <laughs> what about all the video games and the writing? No, nobody would have she, played them if it wasn't actually, for me. Also, well, to be fair, all existed. your video games, all my video games are about you. Yeah, like they all improv <laughs> me in some way. So if it wasn't for me. But what guys, I'm saying, hey, what I'm my, a real genius. What my <gasps> original point was is that the process <gasps> of like, shush. 
is it the process of like being involved and close to a trans person has caused you to examine your privilege oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in a way that you hadn't previously? Oh yeah, but still, all your good ideas do come from me. That's true. Okay, <laughs> it's on the air. <laughs> I would like to think that if people weren't so sheltered and were willing to experience things that come from artists such as yourself and get to know you and have a dialogue with you that's not just trying to make you laugh with bad yanni jokes and just sat like if that guy you talked about before if he had just sat and listened to you and said wow you know from my perspective i didn't know any of this stuff instead of trying to speak over us yeah yeah and, and, and that's that why... he could have been someone you uh, weren't repulsed by Mm -hmm. Zoom. And that's oh. why, like, all my games are sort of, like, an attempt at, like, ambassadorialship. Like, all of my games are about my identity as, like, a trans person or, you know, a queer woman in a really overt way because I sort of, I, I feel like I, I sort of have this avenue um, to expose sort of sheltered people to the, the knowledge that there are more, like, that there are other... Um, people in the world, that, like, that those identities exist, and, like, it's kind of insidious because, um, you know, people, people pay attention to me because they like video games, and I make, I make video games, and, you know, and then... Like, they follow you on Twitter. They follow me on Twitter. your link just to link to, like, Screenshot Saturday and, like, updates on the uh -huh. games, like a lot of developers do, which is okay. They but... follow me on Twitter not realizing that I'm just going to talk about gender to them and identity over and over again, and that, like they're going to possibly get educated as a result. Um, and, yeah, you know, that's awesome. You're like McGruff the crime and, bot dog. It's you so remember funny, McGruff? Like, and, like, hey, why are you not talk and talk about games? And you're like, fuck you, it's my Twitter. Uh -huh. the thing, But the thing is that, like, so that happens, but also what happens that, like, people who I've talked to have actually, like, people who have been terrible and have, like, come from that sort of mindset have ended up like being like, oh, I actually I understand that, or like, you know, I I can acknowledge my privilege, or I'm not educated on this subject, and like I've seen people get better and become like more aware, and so like, I mean, I I, I know that it's possible, I know that it happens, and it oh, basically gosh. it basically I you know keeps me doing what I'm doing. There's oh, there are a bunch questions. of questions There's now. Questions. There are so many questions. I'll read oh, them aloud for funsies. There's so much stuff we didn't get to, though. Ah, oh, we need, like, three hours with you guys. Well, How I can, long do, has I can it do this been... really quick. I can do this one really Hold quick. Hold on. How, has it been, like, an hour and a half already? No, it's only been 45 minutes, but then questions okay. usually okay. take a okay. Hold on. Sure. Let me, I'm going to ask you the I'm questions, ask you questions quick, right quick. now. Okay, everyone should make games. If so, why games? No, everybody should create everything always. Games are just a really good medium because they add interactivity. What inspired you go digging through the Animal Crossing porn? We talked about it, and it oh, was funny. Oh, God. Um, also, we always look at Rule 34 because it's hilarious. Uh-huh. Wait, 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 well, Daphne. You're doing a great job. Oh, but... oh, oh the infographic. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. We, know, we like to read the names of the question people because oh, it makes them feel like they're being close. heard and we listened to. Kingdom Hearts name. Sycorax. <laughs> Ick. 98. Yeah, that's like, it's like an anagram for like, I don't know. Kingdom I don't understand Hearts how Kingdom Hearts <laughs> works. I um, love <laughs> No, like, the reason, um, I don't know, Animal Crossing porn was really fascinating to me because there because was so much of it. It's such and a because... good juxtaposition to, like, porn with, like, these cutesy little animals. Mm -hmm. It's just so wrong. The thing is, like, I was really curious, like, what, like, the gender roles of Animal Crossing porn were. Like, which characters are more eroticized than others? Is it mostly, like women characters who are rather sized? Is it, is it sometimes male characters? And, like, which characters? And, I, like, the results were pretty interesting. Didn't that infographic get on Kotaku? That infographic did get posted on Kotaku. That's ridiculous. I you spent... Can, like, you could, like, just make an infographic of your bubble and, like, make it look like a pie chart and Kotaku would post it, huh? No, it was actually no, very interesting. I'm sure my whole looks like Pac-Man Oh, something. yeah, if you put, like, as long as it looks like... on it, right? Mario tattoo, as long as it looks like a video ball. game, uh huh. Yeah. Just have like a like a Mario mustache tattooed over my butthole. We're just kidding. I like Kotaku sometimes because our roommate. Wrote well, Kotaku. there are like our there are good Kotaku. people who are writing for Kotaku, and it's getting better. But there's also bad people writing for Kotaku who probably need to go away for. Brian Ashcraft, fuck <laughs> right. you. And don't forget, no, don't <laughs> forget about. <laughs> well, I uh, like any place. There's uh, like any culture, really. No, I just it can have a fight with them. 
You want to get in a huge fight with Kotaku? Maybe, maybe no, no, we can... just write Ashcraft. Because uh, maybe oh. we can knock him out, and then he won't write for Kotaku anymore. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I figure the culture of a lot of websites may not be the best, but that doesn't mean that there aren't good if people writing things. Yeah, the thing is, they can get Ashcraft the thing is that there's like since Steven Totillo sort of took over to, um, Kotaku, there's been a lot of like good people who he's got like who is who have come in to start writing for Kotaku that are making mm -hmm. it better. But there's also all these wretched people who were grandfathered in from like the earlier version of Kotaku who are still doing the exact same things that they were mm -hmm. like before and it still make and it just makes the place really wretched and terrible. Like yeah. and the like and popular. Know. And yeah. popular, yeah. Which is the yeah. thing is that they are really afraid of alienating any of like the terrible people who make up a lot of their demographic I think which is why like whenever the they're slowly getting better probably yeah but like there was a while where whenever they would post like they would post like an article about like women in games or about like queer people in games and then the next week they would they would do a post with like by the way nerds we still haven't forgot about you this is still your yeah. site and, and then, here's mm. pictures of some hot women cosplaying just, like, like the last bit of nerd toothpaste down the tube like, yeah i hope so just, like it's, it's easing it out it's like kind of like it's like they're ghettoing the nerds, like like slowly putting them in this corner and like having like a little like because you know how like old people and dumb people stay on Facebook and they never leave Facebook. Uh -huh. Like a oh, they're corral. Building a corral for nerds. Uh -huh. so it's kind of a filter. Uh -huh. Yeah. When okay, you so are... asked a really good question, which was, "Can we see all of Anna's shirt?" Yes. <laughs> this is my shirt. Where'd you get that shirt? I got it from House of Ladosha. Oh, I want to. This is the important part, the part where it says where the eagle is clutching um, banners that say gender variant. What does it say? That it looks like teeth. Look yeah. like elf, elfin or something. Huh? It looked oh, like no, no, elfish. No, 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 there's a part where there's like a ribbon in the in the. Oh, um, I didn't see mouth. that part. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. So this, have to like, look it up. so this shirt is like is like the Ramones logo instead instead of Ramones, it says hormones. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. um, that was a good question. Thank you, Robbie Rand. That was. Uh, would you write for Kotaku about these things if they wanted to? You're a um, great writer. They've actually, Stephen Tio has asked me like a few times to write for Kotaku, and I'm willing to. It's just I haven't figured out what I'm writing about yet because where do you start with Kotaku? <laughs> Does he want you to write about Kotaku? Or just he wants write me to write about anything I want. He said just just write something. And I, which is the hard part because, like, uh, see, I'd, I'd imagine really deciding what exactly to write about for Kotaku. I, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes, where you've got this burning urge to <laughs> kind of—I <laughs> didn't mean it like that—let people know about this uh, experience just, that people can have. There's so much that I want to say. Like, yeah, how do you. How do you pick one thing? I are you would be like my. Like my GDC rant like a couple years ago where I gave like 25 rants in five minutes. Yeah, maybe you can do that. They, uh, Tim Rogers writes um, millions Tim Rogers, of words, articles. Tim Rogers could not fit, like, could not fit a paragraph into five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we talked Tim to him Rogers about that. Tim Rogers is not a 16th writer. writer. No, and he admits it. He feels a little guilty about it, actually. No, I mean, because he gets, like, he, like, finally, when Frank Lance was like, hey, I love your writing, but, but get a fucking that. editor. No, he was like, I'll hire you if you get, get an, an editor. editor. Yeah, and no, he said fucking, I'm not just using, like, my over the too many expletives. No, like, yeah, he said you need a fucking was editor. Like, but I can't afford an editor. And, like, Did so you just change shirts? Yeah, I've, I've uh, Tim has been on the show and he seemed like genuinely guilty feeling about his writing. Like, Tim, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he came yeah. over, like I was talking about his writing. I think I was just a little too like strong because he's kind of timid. You're kidding. He's timid. timid. And, uh -huh. like, <laughs> Tim is Tim is really insecure, and, like, so which he's like in the corner of my apartment, just looking through Nintendo games, being uh -huh. like. I remember this game. Oh, Tim I has like this game. there are. Tim, go hang out. We're cutting balls there, and he's like, "Oh, let's play Wizards and Warriors 2. I'm like, Tim. And so, so Tim has that, like it, it was better. Tim's Tim's heart is like a maelstrom where these like these twin forces of insecurity and vanity are just constantly whirling and like opposing each other. I can totally relate with that personally. Uh, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can relate with that, but I definitely. I only relate that. to the vanity part. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's where yeah, like me and Tim were like, yeah, you've mm. got good hair. <laughs> there was something, oh rats, this conversation's hard to keep up with. There was something so good I was gonna ask. Hopefully it'll come to me later. We'll do a question instead. Um Sermon asks, why don't we see more gay protagonists? Because the people, people making yeah, because the people who are making video games are by and large straight people. Because it's a really straight culture, it's just a straight male culture, and mm -hmm. like every now and then, like someone like Bioware will toss in the option to the option to be gay, but, it's just but that's it's not a straight conversation. Yeah, like that's tokenism. That's not mm -hmm. like there's a difference between like having like a, a variable in the system that can like toggle to either gay or straight and having a game or a character that actually reflects a uh, gay experience and or a queer experience and not most people who are making video games are not coming from a queer experience and they don't know how to write about one most like most people who make games don't know how even how to write about their own experience um, I mean we're gonna see more queer characters in games when we have more queer people making games. I have to do part-time PR for Bennett Foddy. Uh-huh. That's very nice. What, that's Clock. a man running up your neck, kind of? Uh-huh. I'm part-time oh, exactly. too. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> Where does she get the energy? Is she... Oh, how does it she sleeps <laughs> half the day. That's where she gets the energy. Oh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> um, I, I see video games as being in a similar place as like where comics were in like the mid 70s where it had been dominated by kind of chasing a niche audience but chasing them really hard and I think chasing just like um, power fantasy uh, cisgender dudes is kind of like that and then through the indie comics uh, movement and winning an Eisner Award when, when Mouse finally won a big award then mm -hmm. the rest of humanity is like oh maybe video games are actually I mean uh, comic books are uh, uh, artistic medium and not just kind of a uh, vessel for fantasy. Do you think there's something similar going on now? I, I sure hope there is. Cause I'm kind of tired yeah, of I think guys. there is, and I think there's also, I mean, video games are sort of in, in the same position that comics were in for a lot of reasons, and like part of it is that there's sort of this um, cultural struggle for validity, which mm. is dumb and we shouldn't care about. But um, the part where people are realizing that the form isn't defined by the content of it in that like you know comics don't have to be about superheroes they can be about us they can be about your relationship they can be about your cat you know you can they're a form for telling a story and you know comics figure that out and you know people are still making superhero comics and they're still sort of making money, um, <laughs> but people are also making comics that are about, you know, their life experience and about anything, about anything that's not superheroes, and people are reading them. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as many people as the ones who are reading the superhero comics, but that exists and that's happening. Yeah, and, and they're making movies out of them. I don't yeah. know if you saw Persepolis. That was a movie. Oh, yeah, yeah Persepolis is a movie now, huh? Yeah, yeah and like... I think that's. I feel like that's the struggle that games are going through, and like mm -hmm. you can you can tell that like like the, the big publishers are like just do not know what they're doing anymore, and they're sort of s scrambling to hold on. Like um, a friend of ours, uh, Brandon Sheffield, went to uh, E3 this year, and he was like in the bathroom vomiting because the. Because just this uh, the obsession with with hyper violence that was on display, this like this like this attempt to like just keep outdoing itself at the same thing, mm -hmm. like was just nauseating. Because yeah. it's so it's just so clear that they that no one cares anymore. No one cares. Mm -hmm. Like, and they don't know what to do because they don't know anything different. It seems really desperate, though, doesn't it? It seems like... I, I, the way I look at the evolution of video games, there was a, a few turning points, and they're, they're ready for the next turning point, but they don't know what it is, so they're just throwing guns at it and hoping mm -hmm. that's what it turns out to be. Though Sony... Yeah, well, I mean, the, thing that, yeah? 
that the only thing that like if people in the industry what they understand is technology because we mm. like spun the idea that you know video games are a technological form. The history of video games is the history of technology because we talk about you know first eight bit happened then sixteen bit happened, which is ridiculous because a screwdriver is technology, but like fucking Mario yeah, Sunshine should have like, been treated as that's a, not like I don't use Mario Sunshine to unclog <laughs> my twit. Well, I might. You know, Mario Sunshine is what you find in your toilet. Okay. Um, no, because the thing is that, like, the history that we have of video games is the history of corporations, the history of Nintendo and Sega, and, like, people are unable to see, to understand a video game history that's not technological, that the next step isn't um, more processors or, or retina displays or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had, when I was writing Rise of the Video Game Zine Series... <laughs> when I was um, when I was writing Rise of the Video Games Easters, um, this was like a couple years ago at GDC. I ran into I ran into Kyle Orland at um, at a party, and mm -hmm. Kyle Orland used to write. He used to run a video game site called the Video Game Ombudsman, where he actually where he would um, criticize and take apart things that games journalists had written, you know, mm -hmm. shitty games journalism, which is, mo you know, most games journalism. Mm -hmm. um, and so this was someone, like, who I kind of, like, admired back in the day. And, like, now of course, now he's writing what, like, Something WoW for, for dummies. dummies, yeah. But um, but anyway, so, like, I was like, this is, like, this is a guy I used, like, I used to, like, really look up to. I'll tell him about my book. And, you know, I, I, I told, I explained the book to him, like, this is about how everyone can make games. And, like, you know, it's sort of a guide to, like, getting started. And he was like, but won't all the programs be outdated by the time the book comes out? And he just didn't, he didn't mm. get it at all because, you know, when you're in, when you're so entrenched in the industry, all you can see is technology and all you understand is, like, video games and technological terms. It's not, like, my, my book isn't about the programs. The programs are just a means to what I'm talking about in the book. And, like, people can't understand any sort of um, way of thinking about video games. It doesn't have to do with technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like if all we talked about was the paint instead of the paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sad and weird. And no one outside of video game culture is going to get excited about video games when all we're focused on is, you know, online features and processors and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's that's Yeah, because, right. like, it's like, who, like, like it's like how is the... Game stuckism. Yeah, basically. I mean, like, how is a cell processor, like, relevant to anyone's life? Who cares? Like, like you, know the stuck, you know what the Stuckus movement is, right? In our, uh, no, tell me about it. Stuck, tell, tell the listeners about it. Okay, so Stuckism is people that think the only true art is painting. And painting is the only way to do art. Painting, painting, mm. painting. The only painting that's photorealistic in a classical yes. sense. Photorealistic in a classical sense painting and all other contemporary art is shit and it's the death of art. And it's just like... The, the, the thing that we're stuck in right now, and I really like that it's called stuckism because they're stuck <laughs> being stupid. And they're all themselves stuckists, though? So the thing is... Don't forget they also have a the, stick set the up The reason we're asses. having this video game stuckism is because there's people like Anna, and people are saying, everyone can make games. Everyone can make games. It doesn't have to be the newest technological advancement. It doesn't have to be a million dollars. It can be by anybody. And so we have all these video game stuckists coming on and writing their articles about, no, this is what a game it is. You can't make a game because these are the rules that a game must abide by. And if it does not abide by this, by the things that I define a game by, it is therefore objectively not a game. I am a video game stuckist idiot. And, like, it's just like, shut up. Just they don't call themselves yeah. stuckists, though, right? They think they're just... Well, no, they don't call fans. themselves idiots, either. No, 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 stuck is called them so stuck is they have forums you control them it's so easy like you can ms paint something and be like guys this stuck is and they'll be like Argh! it's really good uh, but like like since no, i since people, my book yeah yeah like since my book was published there have been so many like reaction reactionary reactions to it like mm. attempts to solidify the canon and say no we what we need isn't more video games, it's better video games. And, like, you know, if more, if more people are allowed to make video games and they'll just make all these, like, dumb, like, click-and-play games. And, like, there's, there's like, been such a hostile... Like, there's, like, one article, like, a week on, like, Gamma Sutra and, like, Kotaku about how, like, more people shouldn't be able to make games. But the thing is, 
the thing is, is that they're all wrong. History will forget them, yeah, and please, people are going no. to make like, people on the life raft. Uh -huh. Let me and let my academia footnotes be heard. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like there's this. Um, so um, Jay Chastain, who makes uh, amazing games, their most recent game was was Rat Chaos, which is is wonderful, and everyone should play it. Um, emailed me like a couple weeks and said like you know whenever there is any sort of any sort of shifting um, in any artistic field, there's always these people who are already established, who are just trying to cling to, you know, they start setting up the canon, they're trying to cling to this idea that what they're doing is the only thing worth doing. Mm -hmm. And while they're, you know, standing in the sinking ship, everyone else is going on and doing the new thing with, you know, with the means that they have available to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these people can like talk about their video game canons all they want, and how you know, only this kind of game is, is actually a game. Um, but people are still going to go on and, and make all sorts of games, and no one's going to listen to them or care about them. Yeah, yeah, they're. Uh... I guess they'll always have a job writing for Gama Sutra, but like. Other <laughs> That's so weird. I expected games. better out of Gama Sutra. I was actually going to ask if you'd ever written for them because they seem to take this tack that video games are uh, as a culture that site is about taking games as a, a serious medium about analyzing design well, that's, 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 you're talking shit on that person who wrote that awful article that about was, what games are, right? that well was the, there were a couple of them yeah I'm not specifically talking about like well, the thing with Gama Sutra is that although the site is not itself terrible it's very industry oriented and it gives it speaks, it's, a platform to these people who like to speak to themselves. who made like you know like a game like 20 years ago that sold well for a while and haven't done anything in the meanwhile and like you know are coming back to tell us about how um, about their mm -hmm. formal definitions of games and like you know Gama Sutra is also a, you know a platform for some really wonderful stuff but like people like that will always you know, it's like people who, like, made a game back in, like, 1980, and now here they are with a Kickstarter trying to get you to give them $100,000 to make the sequel of that game. And, you know, they don't have... They can't show you any gameplay footage. They haven't, like, gameplay footage. I can't believe I just said that word. Um, they can't show... Oh, uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, it's like, you know, you have, like, people who have the capital, like the social capital of having made a game that was relevant once, like, a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you do that, if you have that, you can post on Gamma Sutra. If you're doing something that's actually interesting, you can probably post on Gamma Sutra, too. Um, I hope so. Do you think it's because... More, you know... I think valuable than the other. <laughs> do you think that people are seeking? Well, you mentioned legitimacy before. Do you think it gives people kind of a false sense of, oh well, if we have this like classic uh, expert on making video games because he's been doing it for twenty years, and therefore his word means something because uh, you, the fact that he's been doing it for so long shows that he's like a, a professor, and therefore listen to what the professor has to say. People buy uh, I mean, into like, this idea of the canon, and like people have this kind of have this like brand loyalty that's such that like anyone who sort of is perceived as an industry insider is like a voice of authority that people are going to give a platform also, to. Also the thing is people mm. that made great things in the past that are really, really like they, that they pioneered and paved the way, those people get old and senile and uh -huh. stupid as they get older. Like people do change and it's possible for someone to make something really great in the past and 20 years later to make absolute shit and maybe not even make sense. Or maybe they make sense, but their opinions have shifted. Like, my mom fucked Abby Hoffman, but now she's a <laughs> fucking Republican scumbag. Like, that was a 40, that was a 30-year change. That's uh -huh. a lifetime, like, between. And it's just, like, just because someone did something good once, like, maybe Anna's going to be awful in the future. Don't say that. Well, not like, awful, but different. But maybe you know, not have the same strengths. I know I'm way worse at most things. Now. You and I have made a commitment to keep yeah, each other from becoming terrible. Yeah, we made a commitment to turning into our mothers. <laughs> <laughs> well, your strengths may change. I mean, Miyamoto's strengths have changed a lot over the years. What are his strengths now? <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you that because you're writing. Uh, it was really good. 
Oh, I guess he what was, was? A that, but he was like, he was like a producer. Like he's. I pity, like, all he I does... pity Miyamoto more than anything right now. Does yeah. he have a gag order? Like he can't he say can't, things. He can't. He's not allowed to talk about his dreams. That's so awful. Like the way that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, this is like too, right? the way that Nintendo has sort of like turned him into their lucky rabbit's foot is really sad. Like he's been totally disenfranchised. He's just a dude who like. He's just a face, and he's not allowed to talk to anyone. He's not allowed and the only way to make to, anything. He just like the only way to retain like that that whimsical air about you is to be free uh, and to be like mm. caged by Nintendo like that. They just suck he's, all of like what is good. At yeah, them. and now he's just a bitter man who walks into the room and yells at people, and he's like, that's that's like his job description. He's the guy who we we fly to like Texas if we need them. If we need someone to yell at the guys who are making like Metroid Prime, and that's not necessarily mm-hmm. his fault. Like that's not his I mean, fault. There are people that turn it's terrible on sad. Too. And, and it's there are sad. people that don't turn terrible. I but wonder why he lets himself locked into that though. Couldn't he just money, say money, 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 money? money, money, money. money. I mean, holy shit! You know how much money he has? He had, Oh my god! Oh my god! But if I were him at that age, I would be thinking. What's my real legacy going to be, and what am I doing with my remaining years? Well, not I mean, just how much money am I going to make. There's yeah, been I mean, talk. He's probably doing stuff with his family. Yeah, and there's yeah. been there's been talk actually. I heard recently about him like like leaving Nintendo and going independent, which mm. I wonder. I wonder if that would actually be able to happen without him going like the Gunpoi Gunpei Yokoi route. Of, where he like, accidentally gets hit. Where by accidentally car. gets hit by a car. You uh-huh. think Gunpei was killed? Yes. Whoa. Yakuza. Gunpei Yokoi Trooper. <laughs> it's so sad we only have 23 minutes left of this. No, I think it's... Dude, Nintendo started making cards for the Yakuza. Uh, Why wouldn't they kill X employees? Dude, no one fucking drives in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm gonna... You guys should just have your own show. You have a live stream. I've seen it. And, but you're playing games mostly on that. I think you guys should just talk to each other and let well, people we, see yeah, the we face. Do, we use... I mean, we use the games that we play in our use streams as sort of like, just uh, Platforms like to jump off yeah, just like a means to cool. just yell about whatever we want to. But it's nice to see you. You're fun to look at. Your faces are good. <laughs> you make good faces. Yeah, see, look at that. Oh, That's what I mean. Well, anyway, just, like, just like if we just could, we would have we would have like we don't even have the technology to like I have to record my TV with my laptop computer uh-huh. so you can't even yeah. fucking see what's on uh-huh. the screen. Like we don't. don't we have don't have a very high budget. <laughs> yeah, neither do we. Neither do we at Destructoid. That's why I had to use Google Plus. Right. All right. I mean, uh, we don't, like have like an organization. Like we're just doing this out of our house or whatever. Mm-hmm. Kind like, of Destructoid is more like that than you may think, but I won't talk much well, more about well, that. The guys I met from Destructoid were down to earth. So yeah, I can, yeah. I can believe you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Don't want to get fired. Um. So many questions. Jeez. Jim Hind is asking so many. Let's start with the bottom one. Your game on AdultSwim.com, Lesbian Spider Queens from Mars, is easily the most commercial game you've ever made. How did you get approached to work on that project, um, and I, are you working on any other big games? Well, I, didn't, I actually I didn't get approached to work in that game. We, I approached no Adult friend. Swim. Oh, we had we had How a friend approach him for us. Remember? We did that, but like, yeah, but like, what I'm saying is that they they didn't come to me. Oh yeah. Like, I had I had. I basically made the entire game and took it to them and said, "Do you want this game?" And then that started like a six-month process. She had enough. She had enough social capital that they knew who she was. Uh-huh. They had put Redder um, on their site previously, like they paid. They a previous like, Flash game. Yeah, Redder, mm-hmm. which was on Newgrounds, and they were like, "Oh, can we give you a little like wad of cash um, to, to put on your site?" And uh-huh. it was like, you know, it was a couple meals worth of food. And, uh-huh. And so they knew who she was, and so when she made this this bigger Flash game, she was like, oh, hey, don't swim. They were, they were interested in it, but they had reservations. Um, no, no. And so... No, <laughs> don't they, like, have games about, like, just murdering strangers? And they they have, have... So here's the thing. So, um... So they now, told me... One of the things they told me... Be careful what you say, because we're trying to get involved. I know. Um, I I'll just. Don't talk too much shit. Okay, just one one funny story. Um, is that they told me there was a level. Um, there's a level in the game called the Chapel. Um, that has a cross in the background. Um, and they told me that they. I had to. 
my PR is making noises at me from off camera. <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to tell this story. Tell this story. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we. Well, but I, I'm guessing whenever you mention chapel or cross, there's no, this weird. Just, and like we had to take out the nipples off. You're the telling the story. I'm not. And I'm not talking. <laughs> She just wanted to tell us. Level and I'm covering you up, and we had to <laughs> and we had to take um we had to move the spider parts up. That was an actual thing that like yeah. was relayed to me. Move the spider parts up. Like we got to cover. Up. They were the they were like in the groin region because they were they were concerned that the spider queens had too much groin region. Like where the human body met the spider. Yeah. Or Did so they you, think you, they you were a little bit more spider and a little bit less human? Did they think people are gonna masturbate too hard to your spider women yes. if they see yeah. too much groin? And, and that's to pull the masturbation a little bit, but not too much because <laughs> like that's probably. <laughs> I can't lie to you. Know that game comes from. It's designed so you can play it one-handed. <laughs> and you have Mighty Joe off. You can play a version of that one-handed as well. That's a uh -huh. good game. Why that's do you think deep. people people are so afraid that someone might get horny by something that gets made by a person? Because we live in a like society built on religion of erotophobes. Like it's just erotophobia, mm. like one oh one thousand million here. Yeah. Just uh, but the, the the listeners might not have known, so thank you for telling them. Yeah. I thought I knew, yeah. Yeah. Uh, more questions. Uh, we only have uh, <laughs> so, so how many minutes left do we have? Nineteen, I think. Uh, Jim Hyan asked another question. I have a question for Ms. Anthony. Your game Dysphoria was a breakthrough, and when you were speaking to a journalist about why dysphoria couldn't have been easily been a book, you said, you can't fail a book. Wow, this person, do you know Jim Hine? Because Jim Hine knows you. Wow, I don't know Jim anyone. A big, <laughs> Jim's a big fan. Uh, how and why do you think games are a better media for relating those kinds of intense personal experiences? Games are about dynamics. Gamers, games are good at, you know, games are good at frustration in particular, and that is what Dysphoria was about. That was the, you know, that was the thing that I was experiencing in the process of, you know, of going through hormone replacement therapy, and that was the thing that I wanted to express to, you know, in the game. And so, the game was the perfect form for that because you can fail at games, you can struggle. It's not, you can. I mean, you can struggle while reading. A book because books can be difficult, stories mm. can be complicated, but it's not the same level of empathy, I think, as in being asked to actually perform this task yourself and mm. to experience the frustration of trying to perform that task and failing yourself. Um, so, I mean, you know, a game was really the perfect thing for Dysphoria to be. And the, the other thing is, like, it's a thing that I, I said before that people might play a game that uh, people might play a game where they might not read a book. I mean, there are mm -hmm. there are books about about you know being transgender. There's you could read um, Kate Bornstein's A Queer and Pleasant Danger, her recent autobiography, um, which Is I haven't really read. It's and I'm endorsing anyway, huh? That what an interesting name, a queer, like a clear and present danger, uh, is it? Yes, like a clear and present danger, a queer and pleasant danger. Oh, pleasant, okay. clever. Um, but so when I when I made Dysphoria and when I like put it on Newgrounds, one of the first Newgrounds comments was someone saying like, you know, if this was a blog post, I wouldn't have read it. If this was a video, I might not have watched it. Mm. But this was a game, so I played it and like. You know, games have the sort of the capacity to reach um, this audience that not all things do. And like you know, like I said, part of what I try to do is to educate people and to sort of use the fact that people who care about video games um, pay attention to me because I make video games. Um, mm. And that's like maybe I can teach them a thing or two. Mm -hmm. It's weird. <sighs> I'm getting sad now. It's happened sometimes when I talk to people that are aware of how bad things are, then I get more aware of it. Um, well, you, we, should be, you should be happy, you should be happy because you're talking, to, because you're, you know, people are aware of these things and people are working to make them better. Should be that should, should be inspire happy. you and yeah, give you hope. because you should be happy because we're creating, like, safe spaces for queer developers to get together and be creative and happy together and be safe. And that's a very I, good thing. 
Mm-hmm. I am happy about that. Absolutely. It's something worth being happy about, not being like, we have worried about. Like, all the time with all these fucking queer modes. They're <laughs> rad. And where do they come from? And how do they know us to just pop up all over the internet? Oh, you're yeah. Anna Ensby. Oh, you're Daphne. Hey, guys, what's up? Let's hang out, make <laughs> games. And we met so many awesome people. And it's so uh-huh. amazing how many queer game developers there are out there. But they've been so quiet up until uh-huh. now. Mm-hmm. And they're starting to speak out. Well, it's it's, they've been so quiet until now because, because they've been so silenced until now. Yeah, because. I have a burning wall of Daphne fireplace to protect them. <laughs> well, what makes me sad is we have this medium that allows you to literally step into somebody else's shoes, so you don't have to look at surface level similarities. Like with movies, people aren't going to go see movies unless they're starring good looking Caucasians because most of the mm-hmm. society wants to be a good looking Caucasian or imagines that they are one. But video games, you can let yourself be anyone. And yet the medium is still dominated by just... Uh, yeah. yeah, what? And they're not even that good well, looking. they're not that good looking, really. <laughs> yeah. just, like, <laughs> just like bald white guys with big guns. Like, I know, I know. Uh, muscles and, and like... And big cock muscles. There was I couldn't agree really more. There was, there, was this, there was this time when I was, I was documenting um, oh, I was every... Every issue of Game Developer, I was documenting the centerfold of all of them, and every month it would be a two-page spread, and every month the two-page spread was a white guy with facial hair and a gun, like a big gun, and it was consistent. It it was consistent up until recently when it was like that little um, Russian game. The Tetris? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah? That's that little Russian game. Um, stacking? Yeah, no. It was I, a don't, game. I don't even know what you're talking it's about. Some, whatever, anyway, it was a cutie game, and so they couldn't have a guy with a gun because it was a cutie game with yeah. a cutie thing. Oh, and then last For a last long issue, time, they were really just consistent. Had brown. Yeah, oh, wait, we have it. I think I have it somewhere around here. Let me show you this. Hi, Brandon Shepard. Please do. We love you, but we hate your <laughs> So, this is the game. cover of the latest issue of Game Developer. It's mm-hmm. just brown, it's just four, <laughs> 100% brown. I think there's like an explosion in the brown, but it's mostly just. Is that I think, there's, I think it's something we spilled on it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, it's just. It's just. This is what. This is the face of video games. It's just a, a brown piece of paper. <laughs> Before I forget, I want people to read your analysis of why Mega Man 9's art direction is much better than Mega Man 10's. That made me feel so stupid. I reviewed both of those games, and I couldn't quite put my finger on why. I loved it. It was brilliant. It, it made me feel smarter afterwards, but regretful that I didn't point that out in the review I did in Mega Man 10. It's just blander. It's, it's more bland. There's no contrasting colors whatsoever. And, like, I don't know. I think it... I think it's partly because there was like there was a reaction from um, from gamers and from game journalists. People were like, "It's garish." Blue, like green and purple. This That's doesn't like, look like. This doesn't look realistic. Since when did nerds know how to match in the first place? Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> like, do you do you know that recently someone released a a patch for Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past oh. that changes Link's hair color from pink to brown? Why? Just make words? Because because, it's, because it's pink, pink is like it's okay. First of all, pink. It's not canon. It's not realistic, and it's not manly. But it looks <laughs> fucking great. But it works because of because of color composition. It works with his outfit because he's wearing green. Like he's wearing green, and he has and he has pink hair, and it works together really well. But like that's not like color composition is important. What's important is like. Canon or masculinity or looking realistic or like any of these things that we shouldn't care about. Yeah, that's a. Uh, uh, and canon is just like oh makes my God. head like crumble. Like, yeah, canon like, makes me very sad. Yeah, like. Yeah. It's Ella was homesick before there was homesick. I hate all canon. Like, oh. We gotta get more questions in. Bano, Bano Safakrat, I can never say their name right, I'm sorry. If you had a budget of a Gears of War game or something similar, what kind of game would you make? What oh my god, pitch? a real life girl maze. <laughs> <laughs> Tell people Basically. what that is, if that's the thing. What is that? But like oh no, we're just talking about a maze made of girls. Um so so okay, so a thing just came out, um, or is in the process of like oh. they're in the process of manufacturing it. Yeah, that's called so Makey Makey. Um oh, I the I idea know. being it's um it's a you know, like a, a circuit board with a bunch of alligator clips. 
And the idea behind it is that you can make anything into a controller. Mm. Because what you do is you put, you can, you can attach um, an alligator clip from, say, a banana to, um, to the, the, the circuit for, like, the button that means space bar. Um, and then you hold another alligator clip that's connected to the circuit board, and then when you touch the banana, you complete the circuit, and your computer thinks the space bar has been pressed. Oh. So essentially, you can make a controller out of anything. Um, and I just, I just bought mine, and I'm planning on. I want to do a lot of, a lot of fun stuff with it. Um, using human beings as controllers. Using human beings as controllers. Basically, I want to make. I really want to make a game that you play by spanking someone, and so this one person has the alligator clip. You know, could be it could be in a variety of places, um, and you have the other alligator clip, and when you spank them, you complete the circuit. Yeah, with the Gears of War budget, you could hire hundreds of women to like step on and like make uh -huh. controllers. I want to make. I really want to make a DDR dance pad out of women. Oh my god, that'd be so good! You could make. Okay, you know, like that scene in Holy Mountain where they have the living heart and he's like poking the butt. Yes. And, like, you could do that, but it'd be like an arcade. Uh huh. Oh my God! Have you seen? Holy I wonder. Mountain? I have not seen Holy Mountain. I've heard about it though. Whatever. They were gonna make. So they, I, there was a Wii so, game called We Love It that was all about spanking. Was uh, it? But, yeah, but then it got. I think they never released it because it was only rated Peggy Twelve, and they were like uh, the all the. Uh, Peggy 12, which is like for 12 year olds, and um, the this British tabloid was, rated, was rated so only 12 year olds should play it. <laughs> you could play it if you were 12 and up. That's how I'm remembering anyway. And the British tabloid media like attacked it and said, you know, such and such developer makes games where 12 year olds spank each other and uh, you know, uh, fake French kiss, and uh, they, they didn't even release it. Spanking and hell, fake French kissing. <laughs> Oh my god, I wasn't really making out when I was 12. That'd be awful. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, regardless, their fear of that being even seen by people who are teenagers caused them uh -huh. to... to people can't them. do anything consensual with each other in video games. Yeah, man. See, this is why I get sad. We should get happy again. I'm going to focus on the fact that you're doing such good work and giving people a space and uh, encouraging people to create their own spaces where they can... Uh, be themselves and show who they are and have people actually relate with them. I'm going to think about that for a second. All right, I feel a little better. Do you want to do more of these suckers? We got yeah, yeah, seven minutes it. left. Maybe we can fit. Okay, great. Um, we already did the Dysphoria 1 question. Which game, this is from Whiskey Jack, which game that has attempted to include or address transgender issues has gotten it the most wrong? Oh. oh, boy, this is a hard oh, question. Wow. <laughs> that's a good question. I know. If you can't think of the most, just one that comes out in your mind that really did it wrong oh, and felt Deadly that tinge. Oh, Deadly Premonition is a good that's one. That's a good one because we love that game. Uh -huh. That game fucks up. Jeff, like, okay, go tell, tell your people that. Yes, please oh, do. Oh, God. So there's a part where... Um... Spoilers! Oh, yeah. So anyone who's playing and praying... Well... This is not like this is not one of the most interesting things you can spoil. It's the least interesting spoiler. It's the worst part of the game. Uh huh. So anyway, there's. It turns out that like you're chasing. You know, Deadly Premonition is a game. It's like it's really obviously based on Twin Peaks, and you're chasing a mysterious killer who is like killing all these women, and then um, like near in, like in the middle three of quarters of the way through the game, you can't even tell yeah, yeah, you find out that. The killer is a crossdresser, um, and it's it's on one hand it's really obviously an homage to like sort of the the fact that um, that the transgendered people and and crossdressers have been villains in movies for a really 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 long time. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, it's in like. A self-conscious, self-aware homage to that. But on the other hand, it's an homage to the fact that trans people are psychotic killers and villains, mm -hmm. um, are mentally unstable people. Because obviously, you know, if you question your gender roles, then you are an maniac unstable killer. maniac killer. Yeah. And, pe and that's and, like something people 
don't even notice. It's like, something like, people don't even question. Like when mm. I when I when it happened for me, I didn't even notice it because I'm so uh. used to seeing like cross dressers are are serial killers mm. in everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like it's... and then when Mam was like, This is pretty gross, I was like, you know what? This is actually pretty gross. Like mm. <laughs> Like it's still it's still okay in our mainstream culture to make jokes about trans people. I, like we were watching for there was a I while where we started watching I'm telling sorry. There was a while where we we started watching Bob's Burgers, um, which is a show that's on TV. And it was funny and I was really enjoying it. And I was like and I actually said that we were like three episodes in and I was like I actually said to my friends, I'm enjoying this show but how many episodes until they make a tranny joke and I don't want to watch it anymore? And it was like the sixth episode. It was, it was three more episodes. Yeah. And <sighs> sure enough, there was an episode of the entire like, punchline of the joke hinged on the fact that there were these trans women who were prostitutes. Um, and I stopped watching the show. Was I it like, uh, uh oh, they're not actually women, and then the, the main characters were yucked out or something? It was well, basically, we, we yeah. Stopped we stopped watching, watching the it because, like, like he came in and he was like, he he, the guy came at home and he's like, guess what I did last night? I gave rides to transsexual prostitutes. Oh wow, trannies, blah blah blah, and then like mm -hmm. really tokeny and gross. Like, uh, uh -huh. It was really uncomfortable. It's, it's it, in comedy, like it's totally. It's okay so to be okay. Yeah, it's okay to be transphobic, and it's really, it really sucks that like I don't know. I can't enjoy any main like mainstream media without the fear that like they're gonna say something really shitty and transphobic and like mm -hmm. and make her feel fucking awful. Yeah. <sighs> I'm feeling worse again. No <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the uh Princess Cookie episode of uh Yes, yes I did. That I made actually, me think of you. I actually liked that episode that a lot. That episode made us um, both fucking cry. Yeah. No joke. We were both like over it still pissed me off. And we me, had though. we had a long we had a series of long conversations about why the character was in the mental institution in the end. That's what pissed me off. That's the pro yeah. that's the part yeah, that's yeah. problematic. I was thinking maybe that's something they had to do for the network. It seems uh -huh. like they're mm. pulling a lot of strings and pushing a lot of envelopes. Yeah. Um like I don't know where that show's gonna go. That like, show is ramping like, up in an like, incredible yeah, way. Mm. Right now, it like, seems like they're just putting as much real shit as they yes. can. I, before I, they get canceled, yeah. yeah before they get it. canceled, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I actually work in a psychiatric hospital on top oh, of this. Yeah. So that's a thing. Just so you know. My I don't know why I told you that. How up? My dad's schizophrenic. Oh, yeah. I have uh, mentally ill people in my family, too. You, this is such you. a bombing time. Did you guys think you would... Do you guys like me at all? Just be honest. I think I think you're I think you're, you're wonderful. Fine. I think you guys are fantastic. Oh, we didn't know each other before the show. But I already knew I liked you guys. I was lucky in that way because I'd watched your stuff. I'd read what you've done. Your avatar is a white dude with hair, though. <laughs> well, uh, that's a, a video game graphic I made for myself a while ago. I can't remember why. But you're not uh, a white dude with hair. Like, he's kind of yellow. He's he's yellowish. I'm yellow. I'm beige. Well, why are you Why are you trying to police his on my day? <laughs> I mean, my, my avatar is a bomb with a skull on it. No, but I mean, like, it's when it, like, okay, sorry. No, 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 no offense taken. I used to have more hair. I'm balder now. Uh, so that's my explanation there. Let's see. Um, also, Raph's a crap. I can never see him. Say that again? I like your head shape. It's a good shape. It's oh, thank you. I just shaved it hours ago for this very show. Uh, do you think you and Jim Sterling could get along well? Yes! Yes! Well, okay. Yes! You pointed in your that... book pretty negatively, but I wonder if you two sat down, if you'd get along better these days, especially so, since he's very well known for challenging. In books. fact, Jim Sterling has apologized to us. Yeah, he linked. Um, he linked in one of his articles like, "Feminazi is something you shouldn't call someone." Like directly referencing the, the uh, conversation we had. And, and then he like, actually like he actually apologized. And then he tweeted us. us. He's like, "Yeah, apologies been waiting, mm -hmm. but you guys don't seem to care." He's like, "No, we don't really care." But like, if I ever sat uh -huh. down with him, I like. I totally would want to yeah. be like. I mean, make fun of so him. like my book, I wrote like I wrote like a year before it was published, and by the time it came out, sorry Jim, um, he had actually he had apologized to us, and in fact, um, 
he has been he's been doing a lot of writing like calling out people for being permissive of sexism and being like you know I walked down this road and I was an idiot and I'm smarter oh. now mm -hmm. and that's it's a really, really good rad. example. He's a really shiny example of like someone who used to be a fucking uh -huh. asshole idiot who is not anymore and they're willing to admit it and their history is laid out on the internet so there's evidence of it. Also mm. wait. I gave, like, two TDCs ago, I gave that drawing that um, my friend did, and he <laughs> signed it, and I handed it to somebody, and he said he would mail it to Jim. Did it ever make it to him? I will ask him. Okay. Uh, I will talk to him soon. It's Jim the Jeff drawing of it's drawing David in Jaffe um, covered in dildos. Covered in dildos um, Jim Sterling does, like... No, Jim Sterling is covered in dildos while David oh, Jaffe is cannonballing onto him. Yes. And Which, they, you guys don't know this, uh, but Jim and I are on a podcast together where he talks about exploring my anus with his fingers all the time. Yes, yeah, it was like... Boy, oh boy, does he talk like, about like, that. I think like, that's why he responded so strongly, was because yeah. he was talking like he mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was a sad thing. Uh, I Anyway, as I've gotten to know you guys... Yeah, he's over it. Yeah, he's... Yeah, you're over it. You'd like him, I think, and he would definitely like you guys, for sure. Yeah. I would I'd have a drink with him. No, oh, it's not really open that. invitation to him, Sterling. Oh, where like we stage like I'm like gonna murder him or something and like he like like gets all mad and then we like hug it out and it's really okay, yeah. and we can that would be adorable it. I would um, love to see that we're we're out of show we're a minute oh, overtime yeah. actually but I want you to promote yourselves and we didn't get to write about your book you're writing a book about level design and ah we didn't even talk about it at I'm all I'm writing about game design it's not out like for a year though yeah so it's okay I'll have plenty of time to like Auntie yell at everyone about it. Dot com. <laughs> Uh, Twitter, Auntie Pixelanti. Twitter, Daphne, D A P H A K N E E. Daphne. Daphne. Poopdoggyballs.com. That's the internet. <laughs> I'm poopdoggyballs.com. She's AuntiePixelanti.com. Auntie Find us on Twitter. We have like Find cyber us on Twitter. Sex publicly all the time. <laughs> With kind of a lot of people. With lots of people. <laughs> well, first, Holmes was born. Then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. What's up, Holmes?